Hey guys, welcome back. Today's project will be outside of the shop. I'm gonna take you back into the house, but first, to explain more, I'm gonna take you back in time. In 2004, I visited an amazing building in the state of Illinois called the Nauvoo Temple. Inside, there's an incredible spiral staircase traveling many floors that inspired me to someday do something similar in my own home. Nine years later, after I'd gotten married and we were planning and designing our house, I drew a round staircase that would be freestanding on the inside stringer. I designed my house with a series of radii, the first being the stairs, then the wall and hallway behind the stairs. I was really excited about the curved staircase but I couldn't afford to hire a company to build them. It was a very big DIY project, especially for never having seen anyone actually build a staircase like this. But with a proper understanding of the stair codes and help from an online forum, I was able to pull it off. My stairs traveled between the main floor and the basement, so the glory of the freestanding stringer is only visible from the basement. I know it's not ideal, but I couldn't afford to build another story on top. I built a round wall and began bending the quarter inch sheets of Luan plywood, which I cut into 16 inch strips and attaching them to the curved wall using tight bond original wood glue applied with a paint roller and 18 gauge one inch by eighth inch crown staples, one layer at a time. Once the stringer was two inches thick, there wasn't much reason to continue making the stringer 16 inches high. Two inches was plenty for the treads to rest on. So carefully plotting each rise and run on the stringer, I cut out what I could with the circular saw and finished it with the sawzall. All remaining 16 inch strips of Luan plywood were cut down to eight inches and the process continued. At this point, it was about making a curved six inch thick beam. A total of more than 15,000 staples were used to hold the laminations together. From here, it was all downhill. My brother and I cut risers and treads from one and seven eighths LVLs, then using more tight bond original and Simpson SD screws, screwed them all together from risers to treads from beneath and from treads to risers from above, and both treads and risers to the stringer, and it was solid. While I was building the stringer, I was worried about it being bouncy. It was not bouncy at all. It was a journey from educating myself to design to build and completion, but it was well worth the work. In time, the round walls were covered with drywall and painted. But now, over three years later, we're finishing the basement and the wall has been removed and it's time to finish this project once and for all. I'm keeping the treads that I installed originally, which were glued down and they're not coming off. So using a template, I cut each tread with a multi-tool and sawzall. At this point, I'm ready to begin adding more curved pieces of quarter inch Luan plywood, which I'm ripping into 16 inch strips to then be attached to the inside of the stringer. More layers, more tight bond red, more clamps, more staples.
Using a sawzall, I'm cutting out each of the treads and removing any excess material from the bottom side. I've traced and scribed to get the shape of each shoe, which is where the balusters attach. And now I'm cutting them out on the bandsaw. I'm fairly worried about the newel post at the bottom of the stairs being knocked loose in the years to come after I've gone to all this effort to install it. So I'm going to use some quarter inch steel plate, just some scraps that I had, to build a bracket that will let me bolt the post to the concrete. And I started cutting it out on the bandsaw, which when I broke my first blade, and then through my last blade, I thought to myself, Self, why aren't you using your plasma cutter? Well, I actually had never used the plasma cutter before. It was just sitting on the cart. So I made the remaining cuts freehand with the plasma and it was incredible. It really made short work of the steel. Even though the quality of the cut looks like it was my first time using it, that's because it was my first time using it. These two pieces of plate will be separated by six inches or so, but they need to be lined up. So I'm drilling all the necessary holes at the same time to bolt it to the concrete. Inside the wood newel post, there will be a steel post that will be bolted to these plates. So it will pass through the top plate and be welded to the bottom plate. This pipe is 1 and 5 8 OD and spans the gap between the top and bottom plates around the perimeter. concrete bolts will be installed down and through these pipes. In some cases, I'm banging it around to make sure that the pipes are centered up over the hole on the bottom plate to make sure there's clearance for the shoulder of the screw and to make sure there's room for the socket that I've also got to get down inside the pipe. So as is, I'm going to be able to bolt this down with five of these concrete anchors, which I think is going to be a ton of strength. But what I'm worried about is not having enough screws on this side. So what I mean by that is that the distance between the holes this direction is about 12 and a half inches, but going this direction, it's only it's less than six inches. So there's a lot of strength to prevent it from moving this direction and there's relatively less strength to prevent it from tipping this direction. And the way that it's going to be set up, I think that it's going to be more vulnerable to being pulled that way. 
Just to make sure I don't ever regret not securing the post well enough, I'm going to add two more concrete screws for the heck of it. There's no kill like overkill, but once this thing is bolted down and covered up, there will be no way to secure it any better. So it's now or never.